Today I'm going to make one of those beautiful geode soaps that you've probably seen in many different forms already. Soapers will make them in cold process and melt and pour, and I'm going to make a cold process base with melt and pour embeds, and then show you a collaboration of different ways that you can get the stone textures, marbles, fissures, cracks, and veins into your design. In today's episode of Thermal Mermaid, I'm making rose quartz. Now, there are a dozen different ways to create effects in your project to look earthy, and I'm going to give you a handful of suggestions and ideas specifically for this design. Now, this project is messy. I'm going to pile in different styles into one bar so it'll look like Mother Nature doing entropy at her best. Before we get started, I'm going to make some stone effects with the melt and pour soap. There are going to be three variations of crystals in this project, and we'll be using three colors to get them. Here you can see I've melted down two small bowls of soap, each with about two ounces each, and I've added one eighth of a teaspoon of amaranth pink, and I've added one eighth of a teaspoon of raspberry red to the other one. You'll see me take the hot soap and pour it into the bottom of a plastic bag. Now I'm going to chop this up into small crumbled pieces so it doesn't matter where I set this to solidify and in the bag it's set out of the way so I can keep working. Now if you're new to Thermal Mermaid, we've got tons of tutorials, tips and tricks on soap making and even full recipes posted on this channel. So make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you'd like to get the next installment. Now it takes 5 to 10 minutes to cool and harden. And when it has, I'm just going to peel the bag from around it and chop it up into small, sharp, crumbled pieces. Now I'll do this with both the colors, and this is going to be the first rock texture that we'll use with the melt and pour. This will be a rose quartz crust on the top, and then also on the veins inside the bar. So right here, there is a total of about four ounces of soap in this pile. I want to reserve about one third of this pile of crumble to add to the second type of texture. Sometimes inside a geode you see these beautiful colors nested in a layer of white frosted crystal, so I want to make something that looks like that. I'm going to take another two ounces of melt and pour and add one eighth of a teaspoon of titanium dioxide. This will give me the white base that I'm looking for, but you could also just use a white melt and pour soap if you wanted to. Now this time, I'm going to pour this flat on top of a piece of saran wrap. And I'm going to finagle this so that as it spreads out, it's sort of in a rectangle shape. We're just going to play with this and move it around a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is layer some of that pink crumbled pieces down the center. And then I'm going to work with it and fold the white over into a tube-like shape. I'm going to wrap the saran wrap around it and then give it a minute to firm up. And so once it's become solid, we'll come back and we'll unwrap it and slice it open. Once we've let this set up for about five minutes, I have this rubbery tube-like worm after I get it unwrapped. And what we're going to do is slice this into flat pieces, as you can see here, and we'll get this more complex geological look on the inside of it. So it's pretty much the same thing from our first texture, but this one is just a little bit more complex and it gives us a little bit of dimension to what we're working with. It's time to gather up our base oils, melt down the hard oils, and combine everything into a large bowl. We'll set this aside until we're ready to add our lye water solution, which you saw me make in the very first clip of this video, and that's been cooling down to room temperature. We won't combine these until both temperatures are within 15 degrees of each other. Now I want a few small pieces of really recognizable gems on the surface of our project. So you probably know, that a beautiful gem look isn't a solid color, but it's a wave of color through the natural stone. So I'm going to pour two ounces of clear melt and pour into a container, 
And then I'm going to pour two more ounces that have been colored with an eighth of a teaspoon of amaranth pink unevenly into the center. And then we'll take that color and we'll pull it through a little bit. Once this has had time to set up, I'll cut it out of the container and slice it right down the center. Now I can cut it into two inch crystal shapes. Now this seems easy enough, but just remember that crystals have five or six geometric sides. So clean angled asymmetrical slices will get you exactly the look that you want. Now once the lye water solution has cooled to room temperature and is anywhere within 15 degrees of the oils, we'll combine these together until they're completely emulsified. The first thing I'm going to do is split these into three parts with one part being larger than the rest. In this part, I'll add one tablespoon of titanium dioxide. Now one tablespoon is a lot of white colorant for about one pound of soap, so this might create glycerin rivers. But because I want to get this geological look, glycerin rivers would fit right into this design. Even so, it's not guaranteed that we'll get them, and it's fine if we do or if we don't in this case, but I typically don't add a full tablespoon of titanium dioxide to any recipe. This is a lot of white colorant. Now for the other two parts of soap, one cup will get one half teaspoon of amaranth pink and the third cup will get one eighth of a teaspoon of raspberry red. And then we'll continue on and mix these together. The fragrance in this recipe is a hybrid that I think matches the rose quartz design beautifully. It's slightly floral and gentle, but it has a twang of a bright morning wake up aroma with a sweet grapefruit. The rose and grapefruit together make for a pleasant, delicate scent that works for those who don't want to be doused with too much floral. So to get this fragrance, we're going to combine three quarters of a Victorian rose with three quarters of clean type. A clean type is a very sterile grapefruit and it's softened by the familiar rose. Now we're ready to start creating our project. Now for the very bottom of our soap design, we're gonna take the white and the raspberry red and pour a little bit of this out and we're gonna pour a layer at the bottom with an in the pot swirl. And this is gonna give us kind of this swirling striation. With this particular bar, you could actually do the entire soap like this, but uh, I'm gonna layer this and show you different designs and techniques that you can use. So here's design technique number one that you could use for your rose quartz recipe and you can see that that's already mixed in beautifully. But another thing that we can do is we can add layers and fissures and fractures that look like stone and geological events happening inside of the, of the design. So here you'll see that I'm layering a little bit of white along the side and right where the white means meets that in the pot swirl color, we have a fissure or a, a fracture and we can make a stark contrast in color. So what I'm gonna do is after we layer that one little bit of white, I'm gonna add my first, that first melt and pour texture that we created, that crumbling look. I'm gonna add a line all the way down and this is gonna create a very strong break in the look of the design. And so we'll start to get something that looks really geological. Lots of precious stones have these really thin veins of color that just 
sort of reach out, they're real tenuous streaks of color. And we can get this effect by adding a mica line, but instead of making it a flat, straight mica line, we want to give it some wavy texture. So once I put a little bit of a layer of mica, I'm actually just going to put this in it's not so easy to pour right at the moment, so we're just going to layer a little bit of mica in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to push it, push that mica all around and I'm going to create a texture with the paintbrush and that's going to give us kind of that spider web mica line look just at the tip, right where it meets that big beautiful bright um, cluster of color right there with our, our melt and pour crumble. And we'll cover this with a layer of white and that will give us the stark contrast, making it look like a vein. Once the white is finished, I'm going to start rotating the colors randomly. Some layers will stay solid and some layers will get a bit of a swirl or a mix into the colors. To make pockets of color stand out, every time I have a point where the contrasting colors meet, then that's an opportunity to create an effect, to make it look like a crack or a fissure in the gem. So here I'll add a row of our white crystal pieces and I'm just going to put this right smack in the center where the two colors are, are divided and that will be the break in our stone image. Now I'm going to dust one side with the dark raspberry red again. You could do this on either side. Frankly, I think it would look better if I had put it on the, on the white side, but we're just giving a little bit of variety. And of course, nature doesn't do anything in symmetry, does it? So we're putting this on our pink side and then I'm going to take that paintbrush and I'm going to even out the line, which I didn't put on evenly. And also it's going to give us more texture and it's going to give us that more tenuous spider veiny look instead of a, a straight or a wavy mica line. And from here on out, I'm just going to continue rotating the colors and layering, layering them on top. And I just want to make sure that I get really good patches of isolated color along with some mixed blended color. And that just kind of gives it that swirl stone effect. Now once we're ready to do the top of the design, I'm going to dust that white side with some pink Himalayan sea salt just to give it a little bit of a crusted look. And then we're going to start taking what we have of our embeds and start placing them all across the top. You might be tempted to make these big beautiful crystals on the top of the sopas decoration. If you do that, be sure to carefully mark your slices and space them out because these embeds won't cut as easily as the base of the bar and you'll have to just place them carefully to keep everything intact. I want the tops of these to look crusted so I've kept mine small at about an inch a piece.
And now that I'm done with the embeds, we're gonna give it just another dusting of pink Himalayan sea salt. And then I'm gonna leave this be for 24 hours so that it can set up and we can bring it over to the cutting board and get this sliced up so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Now my eyes are a little preoccupied with worrying about the cutter being too close to the camera, so I wasn't paying attention when we got a few pieces crumbled on the side and the soap's still soft, so I'm gonna take just a moment and fix this right up, which is just a matter of putting it all back together. As you can see, here are our finished pieces of rose quartz soap. I was sort of anticipating that we might have some real nice striations in the white part of the soap with some glycerin rivers or some crackle, but we didn't get any of that. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm frankly quite happy that we didn't get any glycerin rivers. Um, that was something I kind of just left up to the fate and I didn't spend too much time controlling. But we did get this absolutely incredibly beautiful effect when we swirled the uh, raspberry with the amaranth pink. That came out absolutely beautiful. Now you can see in this demonstration when I made the base of the soap, we used lots of different techniques so you can see the difference in the design. Here in the very bottom layer, you can see the in the pot swirl very clearly. And then when you go up a little bit, you can see our method that when we used that red raspberry pencil line, how it's not a perfect line, but yet it has that sort of pockets of, of color burst like you might see in, uh, in, in a real vein of stones. So you can use any combination of these methods and techniques. You could stick to one if you wanted yours to you know not be so marbled look or you could make it more um, actually patterned and geometric if you want so that you could actually control the design. But here you see a variation of all those different designs piled on top of each other and how they're all different. Now this is considered an intermediate recipe with the many steps involved to make it, but it's not too difficult. If you'd like to get the full recipe for this project, you can find it over in the members directory at thermalmermaid.com. It's listed in the cold process section under Rose Quartz. And if you've never made soap before and you're interested in learning, you can get a full set of beginner recipes for free in the book Soap Maker's Companion, available for free on Amazon Kindle. This contains full recipes and everything that you need to know about getting started with soap making so you can make all of these projects at home. Now if you don't have Amazon Kindle, no worries. Pop on over to thermalmermaid.com and just find the Soap Maker's Companion and you can have that book instantly emailed to you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rose Quartz Cold Process and happy soaping!